We all strive to live a long, prosperous, and healthy life. With advances in health and medical sciences, this goal is ever more attainable. The Sam and Rose Stein Institute for Research on Aging is a nonprofit organized research unit under the auspices of the University of California at San Diego, committed to advancing lifelong health and independence through research, education, and patient care. To better empower and improve the lives of young and old alike, the Stein Institute presents the following program. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. Um, I'm going to talk about cancer vaccines today. And uh, I promised my friend Adam Milgram to make this presentation really simple and easy to understand. Uh, and we'll be happy to answer your question, uh, questions at the end of the talk. We'll have some overview of the lecture. First, you have some definitions. What is an immune system? What is the type of uh, immunotherapy that we are uh, discussing tonight? Also, uh, we have some background on the antigen presentation, which is the process of presentation of the tumor antigens, of the tumor targets, to the immune system. Then we have also, we'll discuss also the targets for the immunotherapy. What are they and how can we identify them? Then we'll show some most recent data of my laboratory on the design and engineering of different types of vaccines. Then we have conclusions and um, future directions for the development of cancer vaccines. The definitions first, what is an immune system? The immune system is the, our defense system against the outside invaders, bacteria and viruses, and also most recently, people began to think about protecting the organism from the cancer. Immunotherapy of cancer is the utilization of the immune system for treatment of cancer. Cancer vaccines are so-called active immunotherapy. Active immunotherapy means that the vaccines are injected in the body of the patient and the patient develop immune response against cancer. Then we'll discuss a little bit about the tumor antigens and how we identify the tumor antigens the cancer vaccines, uh, are, I mean, there are several types of cancer vaccines. They might be whole cancer cells, which are, the cancer cells are normally irradiated before they are injected as a cancer vaccine. They are also cancer vaccines based on the tumor proteins, the proteins that the cancer cell make, makes. Uh, we have also vaccines based on the tumor peptides, which are short fragments of the tumor proteins, and dendritic cells, which are special kind of cells of the immune system. They are able to present very efficiently tumor antigens and tumor peptides to the immune system. We have also uh, nucleic acid vaccines RNA and DNA coding for tumor antigens. And also there are viral and bacterial vectors carrying the genes for the tumor proteins and tumor peptides. Background, we will discuss antigen presentation in the next slide. And um, the peptide MHC complexes, it's really important structure for uh, recognition of the tumor cells and cancer cells by the immune system. Peptides are short fragments, short fragments of the tumor uh, proteins, tumor antigens, and they are recognized by the immune system only if they are attached to the MHC complexes. Then we'll talk about cytotoxic T lymphocytes, 
which are... Can you hear me? Okay. I'm sorry. Then, we, can you hear me now? Okay. Then we'll talk about the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, which are the killer cells, killer lymphocytes. They are able to recognize the peptide MHC complexes on the tumor cells, and lice kill the cancer cells. Then uh, we'll discuss also dendritic cells, and uh, class one antigen presentation is the process for presenting the tumor antigens to the immune system, in this case, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, also called killer lymphocytes. When the tumor cells, this is the tumor cell, when the tumor cell makes the tumor antigenic proteins, they are chopped into small pieces by a structure called proteasome. It's actually a complex of enzymes. And these small tumor peptides are then transported into another structure, another compartment in the cell called endoplasmic reticulum. With the help of transporters, transporter proteins, which are called TAP, transporters associated with antigen processing. And this process is, is very important for presentation of the tumor antigens to the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Once these short peptides are in the endoplasmic reticulum, they bind to so-called MHC, major histocompatibility complex molecules, which are, and then the whole complex of the MHC molecules with the tumor peptide are exported to another compartment called Golgi apparatus, and from Golgi they're exported on the cell surface. And here, the complex of MHC, major histocompatibility complex molecules, and the peptide antigen are recognized by the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, and eventually cytotoxic T lymphocytes may kill this uh, tumor cell. We'll go back to this slide later, but for now we'll continue with closer look at this complex, MHC, peptide, and the cytotoxic T lymphocyte receptor, which is called TCR receptor. Next slide is showing exactly this complex here. <clears throat> the MHC molecule on the tumor cell binds the tumor peptide, the peptide antigen. And the T cell receptor recognize the, recognizes the complex of the peptide and the MHC molecule, and eventually lyses the cancer cell. So they are several different strategies to design peptide vaccine so they can fit better in the MHC molecule and have better contact with the T cell receptor on the cytotoxic T lymphocyte or killer lymphocyte. In reality, this is how the whole complex looks. This is the peptide and this is the MHC molecule surrounding the peptide. So peptide is actually, the tumor peptide is in a growth of uh, the MHC molecule. This is the, CTL, the cytotoxic T lymphocyte and this is the tumor cell. And cytotoxic T lymphocyte is sensing the tumor cells and, and, and approaching the tumor cell. This is a much higher magnification. On, uh, it's an electron microscopy. Here, the lymphocyte recognize the tumor cells and the MHC complex with the peptides here. And it's making a hole into the tumor cell. And in this picture, tumor cell is already dead. And this is the lymphocyte. So how this translate into clinic? Can we treat cancer with this approach? And the, the answer for some patients is yes. This is an example of immunotherapy of melanoma, skin cancer, um, showing the regression of lung metastasis before vaccination. You could see a big lung metastasis. Five months after beginning of the vaccine treatment, 
the lung metastasis is reduced. And two years after the beginning of the vaccine treatment, it's completely disappeared. The other example is renal cell carcinoma, the kidney cancer. Here, picture is not, not very good, but you could see a shadow here, bone metastasis, and after treatment with the vaccine, it disappeared. And also there is regression of lung metastasis in this case, which is here, and after treatment with vaccine, disappeared. And the last example that I have here is for glioma type of uh, brain tumor. Um, this is MRI, and before surgery, here is the tumor after surgery and radiation therapy, tumor shrink. One month after a vaccine injection, tumor is really small and com almost completely disappeared 15 months after the vaccine. So the, the question here is, can we make vaccines work as well as in these patients uh, in most or almost all of the cases? And next slide is dealing with identification of the target antigens. The target antigens are really important because we need more targets to, uh, to uh, attack the cancer cells. And one way to identify target antigens is the screening of cDNA libraries. CDNA libraries are prepared from uh, cancer cells and in, in, each CDNA, in each plasmid of the CDNA library, there is a gene or portion of the gene from the tumor cells. The other approach is to remove the peptides from the surface of the cancer cells and study them by sequencing and, and then use this peptide for immunization. More recent approach is the serological analysis of the cDNA libraries called CEREX. And computer algorithms are really helpful, especially recently, for identification of new target antigens. In my lab, I have applied two of these approaches, the first one and the last one, computer algorithms. How the screening of cDNA libraries work? We have the cDNA library, a library of genes from a cancer cell, and we transfect, we put this gene into another cell together with the MHC molecule, which in this case is HLA 2.1. Then these cells already express the tumor antigens, and we incubate these cells with the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and study and, and, and look if these cells release a protein called interferon gamma by experiment called ELISA. Uh, then if we identify a clone, we go back to this initial cDNA library, expand the cells, purify DNA, and repeat the whole process again until we have the sequence of the gene of interest. So this is a very uh, labor-intensive and um, expensive procedure. An alternative is the computer, the use of computer algorithms. There are many computer algorithms, but most popular are BMAS, which uses the peptide dissociation from the MHC complex to determine which peptide would be most appropriate for the vac uh, most appropriate for vaccine design. The other algorithm is this one, CIFPET for studying the anchor residues. Some of the amino acids in the peptides are specific anchors. They bind to MHC molecule. The other three algorithms deal with the antigen processing, how, which means, which is, is showing how the tumor protein is processed to peptides. Using these algorithms, we identified several new antigens. The first one is the melanoma antigen called MG50. Telomerase is an enzyme which is expressed on 85 to 90 percent of all cancers. And we used for this study the protein part of this enzyme 
called human telomerase reverse transcriptase. More recently in my lab, I have been working on the new prostate cancer antigen called STEEP for six transmembrane epithelial antigen of the prostate. Another antigen expressed in breast cancer and other tumors is the oncofetal antigen. And the HER2 new identified several years ago, which we used to design new synthetic vaccines. The melanoma antigen, um, MG50, we studied the peptides derived from this antigen and identified with several computer algorithms. And these are the actual peptides. There are nine amino acids in each peptide. And every letter here represents one amino acid. So we use these peptides and try to find out if these peptides can bind to the MHC major histocompatibility complex molecule. There is a special assay involving these peptides and the MHC molecule. And we found in this assay that some of these peptides bind very well to the MHC molecule. In the next assay, we use these peptides to immunize in vitro in the laboratory lymphocytes from melanoma patients and from normal volunteers, healthy volunteers, to see if they can induce immune response against cancer. And indeed, this, some of these peptides were able to induce immune response and to generate specific cytotoxic T lymphocytes able to kill the same tumor cells loaded with the peptides. And then we decided to see if these cytotoxic T lymphocytes can kill melanoma cells. We found that the cytotoxic T lymphocytes generated with each of these peptides can kill a variety of melanoma cells. Another antigen that we worked in the last couple of years is the telomerase. In this particular slide, it's shown that the cytotoxic T lymphocytes derived from patients with prostate cancer can kill tumor cells of various origins. The same cytotoxic T lymphocytes were able to kill tumor cells from breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, melanoma, and prostate. The reason for that is that telomerase is widely expressed in most types of cancer, about 90% of all types of cancer. The newer prostate cancer antigen called STEEP is very useful and very promising candidate for cancer vaccine development for several reasons. It is highly expressed in prostate cancer. There is no expression on healthy tissues, which is very important when we apply the cancer vaccines to patients to make sure there are no side effects. There is cell surf surface localization of this protein, which means can be targeted by the immune system. There is a predicted secondary structure, and it is not modulated by hormones. The last feature is very important because in later stages of prostate cancer, the cancer cells are not responsible, are not responsive anymore to hormone treatment. If this steep antigen is not modulated by hormones, it can be targeted even at the latest stages of prostate cancer. Then we used peptides from this prostate cancer antigen to generate cytotoxic T lymphocytes in vitro in the laboratory, and we used healthy donors. In this slide, I'm showing four different healthy donors, donor 3, 4, 9, and 11. In all cases, we found that when we immunize in vitro lymphocytes from these people with 
this particular peptide, the resulting cytotoxic T lymphocytes were able to recognize and kill the cancer cells. We studied 11 donors. Eight of the 11 donors were able to generate specific anti-tumor immune response. Now we are studying if these cytotoxic T lymphocytes can lyse prostate cancer cells in in vitro. Another very important part of the vaccine design is to make sure that we have very stable binding and sufficient binding of the peptide antigen to the MHC molecule. In this case, you could see that in, in two parts of this peptide, amino acid number two and number nine, they don't bind very well to the MHC molecule. As a result, the peptide may detach from this molecule and the cytotoxic T lymphocytes would not be able to see this cancer cell. Therefore, we designed several vaccines by replacing this amino acid on position number two and amino acid on position number nine with different amino acid with fit, uh, fit better into the MHC molecule. In this case, the new vaccine is, much, is binding much better to the MHC molecule. And this peptide analog is called fixed anchor peptide analog. On the other side of the peptide, there is the T cell receptor, the receptor of the killer cytotoxic T lymphocyte. This T cell receptor is, is very important in recognition of the tumor cell and lysis uh, and, and killing of the tumor cell. And here again, to improve the binding of the T cell receptor <coughs> to the MHC molecule and peptide complex, we designed Diff replace this amino acid and have better binding, better attachment to the T cell receptor. These peptide analogs are called heteroclitic analogs. So these are the two, just the two examples of design of synthetic vaccines in cancer. Another approach is to introduce terminal modifications at both ends of the synthetic peptide vaccine. The reason for that is that in most cases, peptide vaccines are injected in the skin of the patients. But at the same time, the skin contains a lot of different enzymes. A group of enzymes is called proteases. These proteases were able to destroy the peptide before the peptide can induce immune response against cancer. And these two molecules prevent the degradation of this pept synthetic peptide vaccine by the enzymes in the skin. The other antigen that we studied is the antigen called her 2 new It is also a very promising target because it's overexpressed in many cancers specifically breast cancer, ovarian cancer, colon cancer, and lung cancer. It is also associated with aggressive disease. It is predictor of poor prognosis for the patients who have this antigen. And it's large protein, which, is, which suggests that there are many tumor antigens that can be identified on this protein. Then we go back to this slide to explain how we use the her 2 new antigen. You could notice a slight difference here. There is a process for translocation of the peptides, the transport of the peptides through this membrane by using these TAP transporters. But in many tumor cells, these TAP transporters do not work. They, don't, they cannot transport peptides. As a result, there are no peptides in this compartment and no complexes here so that there is no recognition of the tumor cells by the CTL and 
survival of the tumor cell. <clears throat> uh, fortunately, there is another mechanism for translocation of this peptide into the endoplasmic reticulum, and this uh, is called signal sequence. It's a special sequence which helps peptides to be transported inside the endoplasmic reticulum where they can bind to the MHC molecules and be exported on the cell surface for recognition by the CTL. So we designed several peptides with uh, attached to signal sequences to help their translocation into this compartment. Once they're translocated into the compartment, there is a special enzyme called signal peptidase, which cleaves the signal sequence from the peptide. The constructs that we designed, we've used several different antigens, but this is the example for the HER2 new peptide antigen. The peptide is nine amino acid long, and we attach the signal sequence on one side of the peptide or the same signal sequence on the other side of the peptide as a control. And also, we, in, we replaced part of the signal sequence with the peptide, the tumor antigenic peptide of interest. And it turns out that this particular construct is the most efficient vaccine, synthetic vaccine that we have developed. The signal sequence has three different regions. The first one is one or two, just one or two very short amino acids which are positively charged. And this part of the signal sequence is responsible for aligning the whole construct with the signal sequence receptor on the membrane. The second part of the signal sequence is a hydrophobic part, which means that it's, it's very difficult to, to dissolve in water. And this hydrophobic part can be replaced with the peptide of interest because the peptide itself is also hydrophobic. And then the last part of the signal sequence contains several other amino acids with other different properties. So we, te we tested these vaccines, these different vaccine constructs in vitro in the laboratory. And we found that when we used specific cytotoxic T lymphocytes, recognizing the short peptide, her 2 new, we were able to show that tumor cells not loaded with this peptide were not lysed. Tumor cells, tumor cells loaded with the short peptide was also not recognized six days after the loading of this peptide. But when we loaded the same tumor cell with the peptide construct, with the tumor peptide preceded by the signal sequence, we saw very good lysis, which means that this vaccine is much more e effective than the short peptide without the signal sequence. The control signal sequence peptide with the signal sequence on the opposite side was not effective. And those, these two constructs are signal sequence incorporating the short peptide. Both of them were very effective. Then we've used dendritic cells to load with our constructs. Dendritic cells are very potent antigen presenting cells. They can capture antigen and process the antigen and present it to the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. After they capture the antigens, they migrate. Normally, this happens in the skin. They migrate to lymph nodes. Then they become mature. I'll, I'll explain in a minute what does this mean. And then interact with the naive T cells to stimulate them and to, to teach them to recognize and kill cancer cells. This is immature dendritic cells. There are a lot of receptors and a lot of molecules on this cell. And this particular type of dendritic cells, the immature dendritic cell, 
can internalize, can process the antigen, but it is not very good in presenting the antigen to the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. In contrast, the mature dendritic cells, you could see the difference there. There are already a lot of projections here. And this cell has a lot of so-called costimulatory molecules and ability to present tumor antigens to the immune cells. This is the cytotoxic T lymphocyte, the killer cell. This is a memory cell, and this is the helper T cell. But dendritic cell, the same dendritic cell can present tumor antigens and tumor peptides to many different immune cells and basically teach them to recognize and kill cancer cells. We use these cells to immunize lymphocytes from patients and from normal volunteers. And the result was that, again, when we used dendritic cell without any peptide, they were not able to immunize well. But when we use peptide with the signal sequence, with the right orientation, the lysis of the tumor cell was very good, both three days and six days after loading of these peptides. We use the other type of signal sequence constructs, where the HER2 new peptide is incorporated into the signal sequence. In both cases, the lysis of the tumor cell was very good. We also applied this strategy, the signal sequence strategy, to study in vivo response in mice. This is an experiment, survival of mice, immunized with different vaccines, const vaccine construct with signal sequences. And 10 days later, these mice were injected with tumor cells. The tumor cells and the tumor begin, begin to grow in all the mice. But then the mice injected, uh, immunized actually, immunized with the vaccine, with the signal sequence, rejected their tumors and survived while all the other mice died. This is demonstration that the signal sequence approach works in vivo. Based on this data and also on diff uh, another type of data that I didn't show with the MART1 uh, melanoma antigen, we designed phase one to clinical trial with new vaccine for melanoma. This vaccine is a synthetic vaccine and it's composed of signal sequence attached to the amino terminus on the right, si on, on the right side of the short MART1 antigenic peptide. And the same peptide replacing the hydrophobic portion of the signal sequence. The objective of this study is to determine toxicity profile of this vaccine. If these vaccines would be any toxic for the patients with melanoma, then to analyze the frequency of the melanoma-specific killer cells, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, prior to and after vaccination, and to evaluate the potential therapeutic role of the vaccines in patients with melanoma. The conclusions for cancer vaccine development is that now we have very good understanding of the immune mechanisms of antigen presentation. Also, we have very improved technology for designing cancer vaccines. We have many new targets, new target antigens, and this results in better vaccine design. First promising clinical trials are the, the data from the first po uh, promising clinical trials are already available. And overall, there is a very positive and optimistic view of the development of the new vaccines for cancer. What are the future directions for cancer vaccine development? First, it will be possible to design optimized vaccines. We have better adjuvants. Better adjuvant is, the adjuvant is actually 
a booster for the vaccine. It is injected together with the, with the vaccine for the, in the patients, and it helps generation of the immune response by the vaccine. Also, the other future direction is the design of multi-epitope vaccine. Vaccines that contain many antigens and can immunize cancer patients against many different tumor antigens. Also, multiple vaccine strategies, applying several different types of vaccines. Also, vaccines combined with other treatment strategies. So these are the future directions, and again, it looks very promising for the design of the cancer vaccines. And my last slide, a very famous French philosopher, René Descartes, said, I think, therefore I am. And the little T-cell said, I sense, therefore I am. And we are working very hard to make sure that the T-cell can recognize and kill cancer cells. Thank you. Dr. Minov has agreed to uh, field questions. Any of you have questions you'd like to have clarified here? Yes. How, how long before we can Could you repeat the question? Uh, Could you repeat yes. the question, please? Can you repeat your question, please? Yeah. How far can you foresee that, you know, how long it will take to get some Yes, this is a very good question because yeah, uh, the question was how long we have to wait to develop really good and powerful vaccines for therapy of cancer. They are already available, a variety of vaccines, and they work very well in some patients. The problem that we have now is that they don't work in high enough percentage of patients. And the designs of the cancer vaccines that I just talked about is particularly important to improve the efficiency of the vaccines so they work in higher percentage of patients. What's the percentage now? It varies from clinical trial to clinical trial, but in, in some trials is 2 3% complete remission. In some clinical trials. Two years ago, there was a, a, a clinical trial performed by Dr. Rosenberg at uh, NCI, National Cancer Institute, with 42% of the patients had clinical, objective clinical response, shrinkage of the tumor, and 92% had immunological response. And that's another important difference that we have to, to discuss. Immuno in, in most of the clinical trials, there is immunological response, which means that we were able to detect immune response to vaccine in the patients, but there were no clinical response, which means that we have to improve the vaccine so it's more powerful and it generates sufficient number of cytotoxic T lymphocytes or other cells able to kill cancer and generate clinical response. Well, now, what is the prospect that we could eventually have uh, a use of these kind of vaccines the way we did for um, so many of the infectious diseases in the past? So it was a preventive management. We didn't wait till we saw the cancer, but we could eliminate it yes. from forming. Yes, all of the vaccines today are therapeutic vaccines. They are designed to treat cancer, not to prevent the cancer. But in the future, there will be vaccines designed, designs designed to prevent cancer. At this moment, all of the vaccines are therapeutic vaccines. Any other questions? Yes. So the question was, can we combine chemotherapy and immunotherapy? Um, yes, if the chemotherapy has been applied more than one month before the immunotherapy. 
So after the patient has received chemotherapy, he has to wait usually one or two months before he can receive a vaccine. I presume the reason for that is that the chemotherapy impairs the yes. immune system exactly. and it has to recover. Exactly. Can it be a complete recovery or is it, what, 90, 80 percent or has that been determined? Uh, is there a complete recovery after treatment with vaccine? This was the question. Okay. No, after tr treatment with chemotherapy. Yes, there, in some cases there is complete recovery after treatment with chemotherapy. But your question was complete recovery of the immune system. Yes, after chemotherapy. Yes. yes. So that they would be armed. Yes, there are many. Pa yes, there are many patients treated with chemotherapy, and then they responded very well to immunotherapy. But that doesn't answer the question. Uh, has anyone measured the magnitude of function of the immune system as a function of time after the chemotherapy? Yeah, I'm not familiar with this Does kind of study. Does it 100% or will 80% be enough? Yes, again, it, it varies from uh, trial to trial, so there are many different types of chemotherapy and different types of immunotherapy, but I'm not familiar with a study mm -hmm. describing exactly how long it takes for the immune system to recover. Yes. Yes, exactly. The question was, can some types of chemotherapy improve the result of the immunotherapy? Yes, that is uh, definitely the case with the chemotherapeutic drug cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide can block part of the cells of the immune system, which are called T suppressor cells. And as a result of that, the immune system gets a boost and uh, the vaccines applied after treatment with, with low doses of cyclophosphamide is uh, much better. And actually the first slide that I showed you, the treatment of melanoma patients and regression of the lung metastasis was exactly this case. Patient were tr was treated first with low dose cyclophosphamide and then with a specific vaccine. The question was, are there any clinical trials with the telomerase? There, there are no clinical trials. They are in the process of, uh, of designing, but they are not completed yet. Do you have any idea how soon they might be ready? How soon the telomerase? Well, the, the clinical, to, to start the clinical trials. With telomerase? Uh, not necessarily, with any of the systems you're working with now. The systems you've described today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are already some clinical trials with similar approaches as the ones that I described. And all of these vaccines that I described are ready for clinical application. We just have to find funding and, mm -hmm. and support to do the clinical trials. But all of these vaccines have been tested with human lymphocytes, with human cells in the laboratory. Now we can, we can apply to, to patients. Any other questions here? Yeah, what are some of the side effects that you might expect in some of the patients that are affected? There, uh, what are the side effects of the vaccines? Actually, side effects are very mild. Normally, just inflammation, local inflammation at the uh, vaccination site. And uh, most of the vaccines are not toxic at all. So this is another advantage of the, the vaccines for cancer. Any other questions? Yes, the question is, can FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, um, accept clinical trials at earlier stage patient, uh, stage two and three, instead of uh, stage four? Yes, that's a very good question. And um, 
we are sure all the scientists and everybody working in this field know that the vaccines will work much better in earlier stage cancer patients than in a later stage. And we have discussed this many times with many uh, different uh, uh, agencies. And um, the, the, the thinking is that, um, and the feeling is that FDA is, uh, is uh, permitting more and more clinical trials at stage two and stage three. And the fir actually the first vaccine for melanoma, which was developed here at the UCSD Cancer Center by Dr. Malcolm Mitchell, it's called Melasin, has been approved in Canada, but not in the United States. Uh, and now is uh, in the process of uh, consideration by the Food and Drug Administration here. And they also consider allowing uh, the application of this vaccine to stage two melanoma cancer patients. Well, we uh, certainly uh, want to thank you for opening up this new view of the future. Thank you.